Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is your super sparkly all the colors of rainbow photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a super effective, reliable, easy to set up home security system that keeps your house safe with 24 seven professional monitoring for as little as 50 cents a day with no contracts. Steven took home the box of goodies Simply Safe sent to protect his home that included everything he needed right in the box. From the easy to set up base station, keypad, wireless entry sensors that have batteries that last five years, security cameras, wireless doorbells, key fobs, panic buttons, water sensors, CO2 and smoke detectors, signage, and even a smart lock for his front door. And I absolutely love smart locks. Steven loved how he could customize everything right from the keypad or the Simply Safe app in a matter of minutes. He even added wireless entry sensors to his shed in the backyard to give him added peace of mind. To learn more and pick up Simply Safe, head on over to simplysafe.com slash fro. First up, let's get a quick update on the ongoing saga involving Kodak, insider trading allegations, massive loans, and a lot of lawsuits. This week, even more class action lawsuits were filed alleging Kodak's board used the knowledge, AKA insider information, that a massive loan was about to be awarded to them to basically give themselves millions of dollars in shares and also purchase shares knowing as soon as the loan information became public, they would get rich beyond. So these lawsuits are being filed to help stockholders recover some of their losses if they had them. Now this is going to continue to be a developing story over the next couple of months. So I will keep you apprised as new information comes out. Kodak stock, which keeps dropping like your ISO at the time of recording this is $6 and 70 cents a share, and I suspect it will continue to drop until it's back to $2. Next up, last week we discussed, could Panasonic be preparing to release another camera in their S lineup? Well, this week Panasonic has confirmed the name, I got a name. and release date of the camera via a teaser video. The camera will be called the S5 and will be released on September 2nd, 2020 at 2 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, which is like 8 p.m. Canadian time or something. I, I don't even know what Greenwich means means. Means. So what did we learn about the S5 from the teaser video? Well, not much. Actually, nothing much other than what it might look like. Now for a second, I thought my YouTube was broken because the teaser video was in black and white and not exactly sharp. Oh, come on. So I got up, played with the rabbit ears, kicked the side of my screen, and well, the video was still black and white and not super sharp. Or are you excited for whatever the S5 might be? If so, let me know down below because I'm super excited. Feel these nipples. Can you tell? Could this be the week? No. Could this be the week Nikon finally ships the long ago announced, many times delayed, Salty. 70 to 200 2.8 VRS for Z mount cameras? According to Nikon, the answer is yes. According to this guy, the answer is no. August 28th is supposed to be the day that the 70 to 200, the 2X converter, the 1.4X converter, and the Z5 start to ship. But we've heard this story many times before, and each time, the date passes with a new delay. You guys aren't trying hard enough? Now I tried to reach out to Madeline K with Nikon PR via FaceTime for a comment, and all I got back was her OnlyFans link where I gladly paid the $4.99 a month subscription fee to get my questions answered. And then? Uh, and she didn't answer it. She actually banned me. Oh well, no OnlyFans for me. So will Nikon be hitting the late August release date of the 70 to 200? My answer is, yeah, they will but in super low quantities. 18. According to my sources, stock will be extremely limited, Whoa. which kind of defeats the entire purpose. Uh, uh, uh. Could there be an unofficial hack to make sure that your Canon EOS R5 doesn't stop shooting after it overheats? What are you talking about? According to a DP review forum user, <laughs> wait, 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 forums are still a thing? What year is this? Anyway, according to a user who goes by the name of Horshack, what do you see? the answer is yes. He's devised a hack to trick the camera. Now, before I tell you what the hack is, I do not recommend you actually use it for anything important. So basically what Horshack says you should do is block the battery door latch to trick the camera into thinking the battery door is still closed. Start filming and when your camera reaches the thermal cutoff, 
don't power it off, but pull the battery out while the camera is still on, then put the battery back in and then you should be good to start the recording right away with a fresh overheating clock. Now several people have posted YouTube videos where they've tested this out and it does in fact seem to work. I do have a few concerns though. One, will you damage the camera if you do this every time you hit the thermal shutdown, aka will you melt your camera sensor at some point? And two, will you corrupt the video file that you were writing to the card when you pulled the battery out? And three, Horshack? Are you going to listen to someone by the name of Horshack? <gasps> Well, I, I, guess, I guess you guys listen to me all the time, so why not? Look, this hack isn't for me, but it does pose some interesting questions that I will wait for Canon to answer in regards to how they determine what overheating actually is. And finally this week, will the rumored full frame entry level Sony camera potentially have A7 III specs in the body of an A6600? According to Sony Alpha rumors and their trusted source? The answer is yes. They are reporting that in mid-September, we will see a new line of cameras called the A5 or A6. The camera will have similar specs to the A7 III with a 24 megapixel sensor and the same AF performance, but in a camera with the body the size of an A6600. Now, if that's the case, I call this a fail. The A6600 body feels like garbage. It's small, dinky, cheap feeling with a minuscule, almost impossible to see through offset viewfinder that I have to shove so far deep into my eye that I leave indentations in my forehead and eyebrow. Come on, that's stupid. Now, before anyone who owns an AXXXX series camera gets angry with me, those cameras are solid in terms of functionality and features, but in terms of size and feel, I hate them. The other rumor claims that this camera will be marketed to vloggers and YouTubers. Really? Isn't vlogging dead already? Now I know, I know, Sony sold a zillion ZV-1s, but you know what, Sony? Show me the numbers and I will eat my hat. I'm not actually wearing a hat, but I'll eat a hat. Short. But in my opinion, any potential entry-level full-frame Sony camera should continue the A7 form factor with some minor tweaks and not try to squeeze a full-frame sensor into a crappy, tiny box of a body. Now I guess we'll have to see if Sony Alpha Rumors got this one right or will be off by four months and still claim that they were right. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.